Hi, welcome along to Thursday's Tipping today. For the second time this week, Nick Watts is the man in the hot seat. He's got three selections for us, and uh, we'll kick straight off, uh, Nick. Uh, Brighton, uh, your first one, Dally 4. Last week when you were on the show, you found us a, a decent 7-2 to winner at the track, and uh, you've gone for the Queen's horse here. Yeah, it's funny. I, I don't particularly like Brighton as a track. I find it quite hard to fathom, but yeah, I fancied one last week and it came off. So trying the same trick again, um, like you said, the, queen, the Queen's horse. Um, nicely bred, as you'd expect. Um, mm. You know, related to Dalyanpour, who's ran in the Derby and won a Coronation Cup, and Dalyanpour, who won a Queen's Vase. Um, just interesting that the horse started off in a good maiden won by Bonoffi at Newbury um, on its first start. Didn't really cut much ice then. That was over one mile two, but next two runs were over a mile, dropped in trip. And as I explained, the breeding of it just a minute ago, not really suited, or well, shouldn't have been suited by a drop in trip. Um, Finished six last time at Nottingham behind a horse called Vitruvian Lady. Didn't trouble the winners, but there was a bit to take from it. It didn't run that badly, although if you looked at how far it's beaten, you say it was well beaten, but there was a bit to take from the run. And I think basically what's happened is they've tried it in a good race on its first start. It hasn't quite come up to scratch, so they thought, OK, the best way to develop this horse will be in time, mm -hmm. over ha in handicaps probably. Um, and now this is its handicap debut. This is the handicap debut. It's off a mark of 54, which is very, very low. Um, and she's back up in trip. Not a fantastic race. Uh, you know, it gives her every chance to get involved if she does have some ability. And her three runs so far, particularly the last two, suggest she has got a little bit of that. So, um, yeah, much more to like about her chances in this race than maybe there was, you know, last time. So Dally for the selection then for Nick in the 4.15 at Brighton. Moving across to Foss Lass, the uh, 5.10 uh, race there where your next selection comes up. Ballyboo Gorta, a, a real money spinner uh, over fences last summer. His rating went up from 72 to 122, yeah. but over smaller obstacles today. Yeah, forty-three pounds. It went up. You're quite right, and you know had an absolutely stellar campaign last summer. And won five times. Um, back over hurdles, five pound lower mark. So um, you know it's, it's got a better mark over hurdles than it has over fences. Um, and this is as much about the trainer as anything else. Peter Bowen is the kind of guy. Um, to me, he either seems very in form or, or completely out of form. And he's, mm. he's quite streaky, but when he is on a hot streak, he, you know, he just goes crazy and just gets winners all over the place. Looking at his stats for the last 14 days, he had seven winners and the yard is absolutely flying. Um, and it's not a massive surprise because he does tend to target the summer prizes. You know, you don't hear so much of him in the winter. On the odd occasion, he may do, mm. gets a few winners at entry at decent prices sometimes. But this is really where he comes to the fore. Ballybo Gorta, this time last year, was making merry in, in, in you know, chases, like we said, gone up £43, just couldn't stop winning. Um, stopped with him, he, he ran at Haydock in November and stopped with him after that. Um, I imagine it was more trying to get into a, a break into him and ground related mm. as well, um, because I think most of it, not all of his wins, but most of his wins have come on a decent surface, and I think that's what he wants. Um, so it's not a surprise that he's had the layoff because obviously it's very wet over the winter. Um, and like I said, the, the stable form at the moment tends to suggest that he's going to be ready to go first time and, and, and ready to run very well. Yeah, another yard that's been in pretty good form um, lately, Alan King's. Um, he's got Dalavar in there. Would that be the main danger? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, King, he's been doing well. Um, and, and he's another one who you know, keeps them going all year long and get good winners on the flat as well. So, yeah, I'd say he's the danger. But, um, you know, if Bally Bogorta can pick up where he left off last, last, last summer, then uh, I think he's got a very good chance off off, like I said, uh, a lower mark. OK, well, moving on to uh, Nick's third selection. It comes on the flat at Sandown. Really good card there, um, evening card. Uh, you've gone for a really nicely bred, uh, once-raced um, cult called Ducab, um, a full brother to the Fugue. Yeah, absolutely. Very nicely bred. And interestingly, comes from the same maiden that we were talking about a minute ago that Dally 4 ran in. Um, Ducab did a little bit better than that, finished third. Um, and yeah, plenty to take from the run. It's got slightly squeezed up in the closing stages, otherwise it might have finished even closer. But again, that was over a bare mile. Uh, you'd have to think it'd be better over this, this one mile two trip here uh, at Sandown. Um, bearing in mind the breeding, like you said, related to or a brother to the Fugue, uh, who was obviously such a superstar last season. Um, Richard Hughes, a rare booking for Roger Varian. Obviously Hughes is uh, in, in fantastic form, but he's only had two, two rides for Roger Varian in the last five seasons, and one of them won. So 50% record, very little to go on. But it's just an unusual booking for Varian. Mm. Uh, I think it's quite interesting. Um, 
And yeah, he's been gelded and he hasn't got any big race entries to Ducab, so he may not be, you know, certainly not in the same echelon as the, as the few last season, but um, no reason why he can't pick up a maiden such as this. And like I said, um, you know, you should, you should come forward from that last run, which was which, not too bad at all. Yeah, it does look a, a hot maiden as well. I was looking at some of the, the other pedigrees once I saw that one was related to the Fugue. And we've got a, a half-brother to authorised Achtung, um, a half-brother to al Kazim Kazakh in the lineup, and a couple of others that are from, from good families. So whatever happens, it should be a good race. Yeah, a good race and, you know, probably produce plenty of future winners. And do Cabo, I think, you know, should ought to go off a decent price. but. You know, um, we're in the same zone with a few of these horses. They're, they're, they're well bred. They haven't shown themselves to be anything special so far. But you know, they they might do uh, in time. And I hope it's going to be Ducab that, that does that uh, in the eight thirty. Mm. Okay. Well, you've given us three selections. Are you leaning slightly more towards one? Yeah, I really like Daddy Four. You know, handicaps will be the making of that horse. And you know, like I said, it's not a fantastic race down at Brighton. Should be able to get involved. Okay, so Dally for the nap for Nick. Time now to get a nap from ratings man Sam Walker. Do you want to like today's Greek Canyon in the 605 of Tipperary? This one slipped back to a nice mark after a quiet winter on the all-weather and he wasn't beaten far on his first run back on turf in a big handicap at the cover recently. He showed good early speed that day, which is often how he runs, so this step back to five furlongs should be within his range. If he can get back to the sort of high 80s figures he was running a year ago, this looks a good opportunity to get back to winning ways.